The next story is about a woman named Antoinette Tuff, who was a bookkeeper in a Georgia elementary school. One day last August, a man carrying an AK-47 automatic rifle and 500 rounds of ammo walked into her office and told her that he had nothing to live for. Rather than allow him to see fear on her face, because who wouldn't have fear on their face, she told him that she knew how he felt. You see, Antoinette's husband of 33 years had recently walked out on her and her multiply disabled son, ripping her entire life and her heart apart. She told him, we all go through something in life. She told him that she loved him. No one got shot at the Ronald E. McNair Discovering Learning Academy that day. Antoinette prayed that day. She prayed hard. Her pastor had recently told his congregation that they needed to anchor themselves in the Lord. She said he taught, it us, taught us to console people when they were bereaving. I, real, I realized that this situation was bigger than me. I just started praying for him. I just started talking to him and allowing him to know some of my life stories and what was going on with me, and that it was going to be okay, and that he could give himself up. Antoinette has no idea why the gunman listened to her. That was nobody but God, she said. I can't even put that on myself. I was praying hard. I give it all to God. It was through God's grace and mercy that I was able to keep myself together, which is what I hope to do in this next section. On a more personal note, I maintain to this day that my grandmother Madeline is the person closest to sainthood that I will ever personally meet. Did she sometimes say exactly what was on her mind like many of us do? Of course she did. And she did it more often as she got older. Did she ever use profanity? Yeah, occasionally. And once it was in the first minute of meeting my now ex-wife, she uttered the most profane group of words I think she ever said in her entire life. Why? Because the woman she was living with at the time was addicted to the Wheel of Fortune television program, and Grandma wasn't. And she was really upset about it that day. But 99.99% of the time, Grandma walked the talk, Jesus talk. She went to morning mass every day of the week she could, via public transportation or walking, because she never drove a car. She said the rosary during all masses she attended, and often at least once per day outside of church. She was in the church kitchen, like some of our ladies are, every time they were cooking up something. But back then it was things like fried chicken, or fried fish, or fried donuts, real fried donuts, fried in lard. They were still warm when he got downstairs. They were in a brown paper bag that just got greasier and greasier, <laughs> just waiting to be stuffed with jelly and covered with powdered sugar. Yeah. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma also cleaned house for other people three or four days a week well into her 60s. And when she stopped, she was one of the cleaning ladies at my high school, and then worked at the abbey where the priest lived. The woman oozed love, and, in large part, and is in large part responsible for my escaping the life I had as a child, for the life I have now as a professor and a candidate for ministry. She and Grandpa taught me how to read third grade books before I even hit kindergarten. Helping with my high school tuition and that of my little brother at that all-boys Catholic high school on Cleveland's east side and helping me get through college. One of my proudest moments was being handed my doctorate diploma with her in the audience at Purdue's Hall of Music in May of 1988. I have two brothers who are younger than me and they were born 36 months after I was, and both of them struggled at school and at life. Madeline Notika made a difference to me by showering me with her love. The rest of the story is that my mother was merely one of Madeline and Joseph's foster children, the last in a string of 17. They only had one child of their own. Blood may be thicker than water, but love surely conquers all. 
Now I'm here today to tell you God does not hold back his love from us, nor control what we do with that love once we open up ourselves enough to receive it. No, it is we who hold him off, and it is we who keep that love to ourselves when we get it. We think of ourselves as unworthy, or worry that the love given will be love lost. I know that I once felt unworthy and did not know how to share his love. Why is it that we judge ourselves so harshly? Why is it that we hoard love? After all, Jesus died on a cross on a hill to wash away our sins. After spending an appreciable part of his life telling the Pharisees to stop judging each other and just let love flow. His people are more important than the rules that divide us. So strive to be someone who gets it and lives their life with confidence that God's love can give us. And now, so I can recover, we've got a video to show. So Caleb, if you are ready. It's likely that no one actually observed the Holy Spirit descend upon you as John the Baptist happened to see, happened to Jesus. But I can assure you that if you are here today, the Holy Spirit is within you. It's just that we humans won't let that light shine forth. Here at Springville, we signify the presence of the Spirit by lighting these candles at the beginning of every service. We extinguish them at the end of our time together as a reminder that we're supposed to take that Spirit with us everywhere we go, all of the time, so that every unselfish act we can remind ourselves to let others know that God is alive and present today in us. I'll wind down with a passage from the message translation of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. Imagine, when you give of your heart and do something, you may inspire someone else to look deep within and find the spirit of love that all the people I talked about today found in them. It's in them, and it's in you. Because God made you, as the song reminds us, to do something. I ask you to unleash his love early and often. And if the last 20 minutes doesn't do anything for you, Maybe some John Wesley will. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you ever can. God bless you. Amen.